Bienvenidos a Ciudad de México. Welcome to Mexico City, everyone. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist, and today we're going to explore one of the most important religious sites in the entire world, especially for the Roman Catholic world. This is the Metropolitan Cathedral. It has a much longer name, which I'll tell you soon, but it was built upon the ruins of Tetnochitlan, which was the gleaming city of the Aztecs in the middle of the lake. It was basically the Venice of the West that stunned the Spaniards when they first came here in the 1500s. So join me as we learn about the secrets of this cathedral, how it was almost destroyed, and the ruins that are still visible right behind it. So the cathedral is in the middle of the great city of Mexico City. It is in the Plaza de la Constitución, constitutional plaza, but it's more known as a Zócalo. This took three centuries to build and it is one of the largest cathedrals in all of North America. It was responsible for being the center point for millions of converted adherents during the 1500s and the 1600s. To this day, Mexico is one of the most Catholic countries in the world. But as we look at the cathedral from the outside, you might notice it is a complete mishmash of different styles. The reason that is, is because of how long it took to build. Initially, it was built in the Gothic style, inspired by the great Gothic cathedrals of Spain, like in Salamanca, Sevilla, and many others. However, what was the first starting point of this church? For that, we have to go back to 1524. Hernán Cortés took over Tenochtitlan, the Aztec Empire. He decided to put the very first foundations of this cathedral using one of the stones from the Great Pyramid, El Templo Mayor, which we'll see its ruins soon. However, when it was originally built, the cathedral was nice and tiny, and it was a bit too humble for Hernán Cortés and for the, this new city that would be deemed Mexico City. Thus, in 1544, they designed an entirely new massive cathedral that would compete with the great cathedrals of Europe. But it was nearly destroyed in 1856 because the governor of Mexico, the city itself, or the state of the uh, Mexico state, which is in within the country of Mexico, it's a bit confusing, it's triple Mexico, tried to enter the front doors using his horse. So Juan Jose Bas, the governor, wanted to ride into the very front doors with his horse. But the priest, the bishop, came up to the very front doors and said, no, you can't enter. And he was stunned. He was like, how dare you deny me entry to this cathedral? Well, the thing is, Juan Jose Bas was actually purposefully provoking the bishop because he disliked the Catholic Church. He wanted to destroy it to the ground. He looked at this gleaming cathedral and he thought to himself, hmm, it's not a nice cathedral. I'd rather destroy it and build something new, a grand palace, a grand governmental building. Who knows what he wanted to build? So on Holy Thursday, he came to these very front steps with artillery, cannons, oh no, uh, cannons right in front and threatened to blow up the church. But the Catholic adherents of this great city end up getting wind of what was happening and a riot broke loose. Luckily, this cathedral was not destroyed. Let's walk inside. So let's walk inside. Now the name of this cathedral is very long. I'm gonna tell it to you. 
in a bit, but I actually have to refer to the name because it's so long, it's hard to even remember. Here we are. Right there, we see the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. The Our Lady was an apparition seen in 1531 by an indigenous man by the name of Juan Diego, who was recently converted and studying under the Franciscan friars. He saw the Our Lady, and this image was imprinted on his uh, cactus fiber cloak. This is not the original image, it's located in a different basilica, but it's one of the most well-known images of the Virgin Mary here in Mexico. Here's the altar of forgiveness. Now, unfortunately, in the mid-1900s, there was a massive fire that ravaged the cathedral, and this was very heavily damaged. So this had to be repaired. Let's take a closer look. So I mentioned it started as gothic, but it looks way different in the inside. The arches are rather rounded. So first, before we continue, let me actually tell you the full title of the church. It's a quite a mouthful. I'm going to say in English, Metro Metropolitan Cathedral of the Assumption of the Most Blessed Virgin to Heaven. Yep, that is the full title. Now there's a lot of different chapels all around dedicated to different saints. So because it took three centuries to build, there was a whole entire mishmash of different architects. It went from Gothic to Neoclassical to Neo-Renaissance to Baroque and then back to classical. Classical is like a mishmash of Romanesque and, and Greek. So it had quite a bit, mishmash of different styles which we're seeing right here as we're walking around. Now, as we're walking around, remember, the stones of this church is made with a volcanic rock. This volcanic rock was not mined by the Spaniards. They did not go to the nearby volcano and took those rocks. No, they dismantled the pyramids known as the Templo Mayor, the main temple, brick by brick, and used it to re rebuild it as a cathedral. This cathedral that we're standing on right now. Flash. Okay, sing flash. Okay, done. Let's visit the most beautiful of and ornate altars in any cathedral that you'll see. And this is known as the Altar of Kings. So this was built by Jerónimo de Balbas from 1713 to 1730s. It took quite a while to build. But amongst the gilded ornamental reliefs, are all the different paintings. So on the base we see the different queens of the Catholic faith. 
and then right above the different kings of the Catholic faith and then right above we have the Holy King, God, incarnate. something cool because this cathedral is in constant maintenance and why is it in constant maintenance yeah old buildings require constant maintenance that's true but this cathedral has a much bigger problem because I mentioned this was built upon Aztec ruins these Aztec ruins they themselves didn't know Chile was built upon landfill it was a tiny little island that kept growing in size so, since all of Mexico City is mostly built on a huge lake that's land-filled, most of the buildings are sinking, including this cathedral. And here's the marker. This is balanced all the way on the very top of the building. And it's balanced to calculate how much the cathedral is actually moving. And it's been shifting around for hundreds of years. So, yep, we are in the sinking cathedral right now. So, it's in danger at any moment. So, there's a rumor that this cathedral has a tunnel that leads all the way to ancient ruins of the Aztecs that are still visible to this day. But why? Well, that might be mere legend, but the ruins are real and we can see them. Let's go and check out El Templo Mayor. So here's the cathedral from the outside. Now, one interesting fact is this, these portals, doors, were not inspired by Spanish architecture, but they were actually inspired by Flemish architecture by a man called Peter Paul Rubens, uh, which is very interesting. <laughs> uh, it was quite diverse in its inspirations. And here's a statue of John Paul II with the Virgin Mary kind of imprinted on him. And you can see the volcanic rock from this uh, point of view, right over there, with the, this bell tower. So now, we're going to go walk outside and walk around to get to the Templo Mayor. And it's really nearby. Over here, right around. We'll see a lot of the historic buildings of Mexico City. So instead of streets, as we're walking on one right now, it would be canals. The interesting thing is, there were indeed a few streets, but it was mostly canals. One of the few streets in Tenochtitlan was an avenue that intersect at the cardinal directions, north, south, east, west. The cathedral is built exactly in those cardinal directions. 
But down here, we get to see what the city might have looked like. So what was that no cheat land? What, what, where does it come from? Weirdest bench I've ever seen. And here they are. Let's go. This is a scale model of how Tenochtitlan, what was Mexico City before the Spaniards, looked like. Right there in the middle is a gigantic temple. It is in the shape of a pyramid and dedicated to two different gods. Huitzilopochtli, the god of war. And that's, this is a bit of a simplification, of course, because Aztec gods function more as essences, so they represented many different things. And then right next to Huitzilopochtli is the god Tlaloc. And Tlaloc is the god of rain. So many hundreds of years ago, before the 1300s, as the Aztecs were roaming nomads going through Mexico, some people think that they might have come from the coasts of Mexico. Others think they might have come from the southeast, southwest region of America. They're finding a place that they can call home. So in order to make some money, in order to sustain themselves, of course, they're hunting from the land, but the Lee's lands don't have really that many big animals to feed on. So they had to count on making some type of income by becoming mercenaries and warriors for hire. As they're roaming around these lands, they start worshiping a god named Huitzilopochtli, which is the god who is worshipped on this very temple. Huitzilopochtli, according to the myth, said that you will find the so-called promised land, you will find a very fertile place which you can build your own very empire of the Mexica. Mexica is what we now know as the Aztecs. In a place where there is an eagle perched on a prickly pear that is on a cactus that is on top of a little island in the middle of a great lake in the middle of a valley. And that eagle is biting a snake. So I am literally describing right now the emblem in the middle of the Mexican flag. As the Mexica were ro roaming around, this is the place, Tetnochitlan, an island in the middle of a valley, I mean, in the middle of a lake, in the middle of a valley, and they found that here. So this is where they settled down and built this great empire that lasted for a little bit less than 200 years. But then in 1521, it was destroyed taken over, conquered by a Spanish conquistador of the name of Hernán Cortés. And he built this grand, uh, he ended up destroying this grand temple, taking it down brick by brick in order to build the cathedral. Here we see the ruins to this day. We see the cactus. the maguey plant, which is used to make the drink of the gods, purque, which was a holy drink here in ancient Aztec Tetnochitlan. And we can see the volcanic rock 
same ones that are on the cathedral. The thing is, these aren't the only ruins. All of Mexico City is covered in ruins. And because the ruins are underneath and because these ruins themselves were built on the lake bed in landfill, the entire city is sinking. So I can just imagine how much more is there to discover in this city as we see this gleaming cathedral and we see these ruins. Who knows what lies underneath? But there is one other secret over here. Back in the 1970s, they found something very interesting. They found this stone. This is the stone of Goyoshakwi. Goyoshakwi was the sister of Huitzilopochtli, the god of war. Huitzilopochtli was the main god for the Aztecs, the Mexica. Other nearby tribes of Mesoamerica, and some of them were major cities, worshipped other different gods first, or at least they put them in priority. Some of them may be Taloc, maybe some were the feathered serpent like Quetzalcoatl. But here was Huitzilopochtli. And according to the lore, Huitzilopochtli was born from Calique, who was the mother goddess who got pregnant by a feather that she picked up while sweeping one of the main temples. However, Calique already had more than 400 children. So these children got very pissed that Calique was pregnant with someone who wasn't birthed by their own father. Thus, they came to kill the baby as it was being born. As they approach Calique, she's giving birth to Huitzilopochtli. He comes out, out of her womb as a fully formed human being or humanoid. Filled with armor, covered in armor and with weapons and with a shield. He starts killing all the different gods. And as he kills every single of these children of Kaolikwe, they all become stars in the sky. The main one that he ends up killing is Koyoshakwe, his own sister. And what he does with his own sister, he dismembers her, cuts her into little pieces, cuts her arms, cuts her legs, cuts her head, and throws her body down the temple. This myth was recreated over and over again in real life by the Mexica themselves, the Aztecs. So that's where they did these ritual sacrifices. And no, they are not mere exaggerations from famous Hollywood films or the Spaniards who were trying to justify conquering the lands. These were real sacrifices that took place. Many thousands of people were indeed sacrificed and the Aztecs themselves gloated about them in written record. They threw bodies down the temple steps. They threw the body parts. They cut off the heart and they would put the heart in the basket and sometimes they would, the priest would eat the heart or they would use the heart to sprinkle blood over some type of ceremonial dish. The body parts would let later be used uh, to be eaten, either by the priests themselves or very high ranking officials in the empire or if not, it would be sold to commoners to use as sustenance. Those parts would be sold at the bottom of the market. So that round stone that they found here, Koyoshakwi, is a depiction of that dismembered goddess. Huitzilopochtli ended up, he himself ended up becoming the sun. And because he ended up becoming the sun, the Mexica believed that they had to continue giving sacrifices to Huitzilopochtli because he had a fondness for eating hearts. Hearts is what gave him sustenance. And thus, that's why they performed all these ritual sacrifices. These ritual sacrifices got into such high numbers in the thousands, tens of thousands. Some people might say even more than that. 
that the other nearby tribes were tired of it or scared or angry, such as the Tlaxcalans, who sided with the Spaniards and Nan Cortes to help them conquer the Mexica slash Aztecs. Thus, this story is in itself a very complicated tale, dealing with so many different facets. So a lot of the Spaniards who first came here were first in awe of the city, but then horrified and terrified of what was transpiring here. And of course, the Spaniards were responsible for many of their own atrocities, but the atrocities that they saw here were something they'd never seen in Europe. That said, these ruins are a reminder of that culture that predates. But all the cultures in this area of most of Mesoamerica were not all created equal. They were not all doing mass ritual sacrifices. It was the Mexica. The other tribes were different. And it's crazy looking at these ruins thinking that so much atrocities happened here. It would be perfect for a Netflix drama, to be honest. Well, this is the Templo Mayor right behind La Catedral Metropolitana, the Metropolitan Cathedral. Highly recommend visiting it. Uh, it is closed right now because the roof collapsed, but hopefully it'll open up again. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist. Thank you so much for watching this tour of these grounds in the historic center of Mexico City. It is a crazy story. I just told you an abridged version to make this not so long, but keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a good day, everyone.